Hello and welcome back to the Compendium of Discomfort. My name is Michael and we're here to talk about another Saka release, a nice short movie that we will get uh, to in a minute. But uh, first they had some other announcement. Some other announcement, yeah, makes sense. Um, the Ch Chicago Japan Film Collective 2024, um, kind of a film festival, um, have some screenings in Chicago, obviously, and they have a nice little um, online screening. So uh, some of their movies will be available online on Saka, so you will be able to watch them there. I will just name them. I haven't heard of most of them, um, but uh, yeah. One is 99% Cloudy Always, that's one I have heard of, but I don't know if it's good or not. Then we have uh, Bring Minjo Back, we have uh, Kopo A Kopo, we have Espa, Private Detective Agency, Searching for Goodbye, we have Leave in Summer, Not Born Yesterday, uh, Till the Day I Can Laugh About My Blues, these are the titles that I don't really no, and then we have uh, two movies that look very, very interesting. One is The Girls, uh, which is interesting because it's made by uh, Kenichi Ugana, who made some very interesting, nice movies, um, namely uh, Visitors, uh, which is a slice of life zombie movie, which is really, really good. I saw that in cinema this year, it was a lot of fun. And then he made this. Um, I always forget the title. Extraneous Matters? Probably. Yeah, Extraneous Matters, that's actually correct. And that's a very fun, episodic um, alien movie. Both very low budget, but uh, very interesting. So I would highly recommend to check this one out as well. It will most likely be very fun. And then there's New Nemudu Pro Wrestling Story. I saw the trailer a few times when I played here in my local cinema, but I didn't manage to watch it actually. But it's a, a documentary about a local wrestling um, a league or event. And uh, yeah, it, it looks very, very nice and very interesting. And you can watch all these movies um, if you want to see one it costs 12 dollars if you want to see them all together uh, nine movies it's 30 dollars uh, if you um, pay in advance i think uh, so 30 dollars nine movies doesn't sound too bad i would uh, give it a try if i were you maybe i will but i'm in japan uh, not in Japan, obviously, like usual. Um, anyway, so that looks very, very fun, and I think Saka may have uh, done a good deal there. Teaming up with a festival is always a good idea. And uh, yeah, sounds very interesting. Let's see what happens there. And what else happens there uh, is a double of um, movies by... Uh, Yusaku Matsumoto, a very interesting young director, born in 1992, and his debut movie was Noise, which I have seen a couple of years ago. It's a very interesting movie about um, the idol scene in Tokyo, the issues that come with that. You can imagine maybe the audience is not always the most uh, pleasant because they're all depressed old men who go there to look at a uh, young beautiful ladies, uh, sometimes a little bit icky, I would say, but uh, yeah, it's a very, very good movie, it's a very interesting movie, and after that he made the one that we will talk about today, that's made in Japan, and he actually made uh, one more that I have seen last year, I think, well, it says here 2022, so maybe two years ago. That's not really that long ago. And that's all because of me with um, Joe Odagiri about a little boy, or he's so little, I don't really remember, it's quite some time ago. But a boy who I think is looking for his mother, and instead of a mother, he finds a homeless man who he befriends. That's a really nice drama that. Uh, is in the end very, very uh, dramatic, actually, and uh, 
makes you hate the police. Well, like, what else could you want than hating the police? Um, yeah, and then he made another movie, which was actually a quite big hit um, last year. That was Winnie. And I somehow it, it appeared in uh, around me and I thought, okay, this is a big thing that's going on, but I didn't get around to actually watch it for some reason. I think I, I got a little bit wrong impression as I was, oh, I don't know. Um, but it seems to be a very interesting movie. Like I said, it was one of the bigger indie hits and seems to be like early internet days, uh, some software development uh, problems again with the police. And uh, yeah, I will talk about that very soon because this as well will be released by Saka. So um, very, very happy to finally watch that. Um, looks great. And uh, yeah, today we will talk about a movie called Made in Japan. Like I said, made by uh, Yusaku Matsumoto. It was his second movie after Noise. And we have some not so well-known cast members. I will just mention the three most famous. That's Takahiro Konishi, who's most famous for being in the last couple of uh, Shion Sono movies. And this strange movie... That's called in English a possibly hoo hoo, um, which Shion Sono wrote under a fake name to get back into business after those uh, accusations about his uh, mistreatment of women and, uh, for example, uh, allegedly offering f movie roles in exchange for, um, yeah, sexual intercourse. Um, and then the ladies got like a extra role without any lines, just standing in the background or something like that. Uh, stuff and worse uh, seemingly happened. And uh, yeah, that was his try to somehow get back into business with a fake name. Uh, I don't know if the movie actually showed up at some point. I think at a film festival in Poland or something. But uh, yeah... He should just stay home and uh, don't annoy people with his uh, presence. Anyway, uh, to nicer things. Even though this movie today isn't really nice. Uh, we have one more lady. That's uh, Rino Higa, who made some movies which I don't know. But one of them was actually a movie with Hiroshi Abe. As it's called Cheers from Heaven. And looks uh, very, very funny. And uh, or more, more happy than funny. Um, yeah, no idea what that is. But Hiroshi Abe. Is a good boy, why not? And then we have a lady called Mao, which you most likely will have seen in One Cut of the Dead. And uh, yeah. So today's movie is a very short, it's a short movie, just 30 minutes long, so we will probably not need a big spoiler section. Um, let me just read something out for you that the director said about this movie, which will, for the most part, explain already many things. So, in one book that I encountered, the author questioned what would extinguish the human race. The author of that book said the media would. The media can both save human beings or kill them, the book said. I'm a filmmaker, and film is media. In a way, I'm on the side of I'm on the side that generates the media. As someone who creates and generates the media, I felt the need to tackle the theme in my film. I hope you watch and enjoy it. Um, I watched it. I enjoyed it in some certain way. Uh, it's not a very pleasant film, and the first scene already makes that very, very clear, because we see, uh, luckily, in not too much detail, how some guys uh, beat up one more guy and um, eventually burn him to death, which is uh, not very friendly, I would say. And this totally sets the tonality for the whole movie, because there's not much nice going on. But um, the movie switches to one guy at work, and his co-worker is like, oh, look here, this thing happens uh, in the magazine. They wrote about this case, and basically he looks at the picture, and there we see the first issue with the media here. They have a picture of the 
person who allegedly killed the other guy and it's just a little black bar around the eyes and he says oh he has this huge tattoo on his neck i know this guy he used to work here and he uh, tweets about it and the media picks up on it and suddenly he's in a situation where people give him money for information and it's very obvious very soon that nobody really cares whether or not this information is uh, true or not they just want the most uh, scandalous uh, scoopy thing they can get and they will pay a lot of money so he feels very encouraged to encourage his friends as well to uh, just lie and tell the craziest stories to just get uh, fame and money and that's the main topic here like people are willing to do whatever it takes to get some clicks on social media there's one uh, girl who always runs around with her phone and um, films stuff and there's this line uh, that i will quote from a letterbox review today i'm gonna go to the psycho killer's house while i'm eating a donut just not taking this issue serious at all okay i'm eating a donut just for the fun uh, for the joy like a certain uh, what a logan paul who filmed a uh, dead man and uh somehow felt like that's entertaining or something that's worth showing so this is very accurate i would say um this plays into another thing that's uh, a very common theme uh racism like in the, all their lives they're like oh maybe here there's uh, something he's like half korean or something and then they're like oh they're foreigners the evil foreigners and um yeah it just gets crazier and crazier and more hate gets generated just by greed and people wanting to get uh, fame and more clicks and more money and it's just uh, disgusting what's going on here and that's the basically the whole story it's uh, 30 minutes long it's very condensed it's very focused it's a very well made movie there's no fat on that it's just just this one element and uh, how to uh, how this media thing works how they don't care about the victims at all they don't care about the other people involved like the, 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 this group of people they just talk a lot of nonsense to the media and they, they do the same what they did with the killers how they print pictures of them with just a little um, like bar on the eyes so everybody who knows them knows all oh, this is my my group of people that i hang out with and of course this whole thing needs to go wrong at some point and um yeah we figure out how the media reacts uh, if you maybe uh, lie to them a little bit or if you abuse their mechanisms that's what it is in the end and um yeah, and yet we, we, nobody really knows what is actually true and nobody really cares what's true. It's just for your own benefit or for your own safety. People will just do and say whatever needs to be said to uh, benefit from it or to not get any damage from it. Um, yeah, and so that's the whole point. It reminded me a lot of... Uh, documentary i forgot the title i'm very sorry i saw it at the nippon connection a few years ago which was very very interesting because it was a documentary essentially about making documentaries and how making the documentary already um changes reality by just being there and filming it and maybe asking oh, could you do that again or could you do it slightly different so it matches more our narrative and uh yeah that's a big thing and somehow this whole media topic and especially how the media reacts to a big scandal um is a recurring theme in japanese movies you see it all the time like how 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 like a lot of media people just um basically invade someone's uh, private space i mean they, they don't get in but they completely block the house nobody can in nobody can get out so people just get in trouble because the media tries to report on them and they don't even want to talk to them uh, which i think is a total catastrophe in the uh, system like how is it possible that people get 
so terribly harassed uh, without the police coming and just getting the dirt off the street. Uh, it's it's completely unbelievable. We see it again and again. It seems to be a very common topic in Japan and uh, very disgusting. We see it here. We see it in many, many other movies. And it's, uh, yeah, like I said, a recurring theme. And yeah, this movie is very, very much on this idea what damage... Um, media can create um even though this first quote that the director had from this um book i slightly disagree at least for his field of work because i feel like a movie um has a slightly different um uh, responsibility than maybe a news magazine so I don't know if he actually presented his field of work actually because like a news magazine has the obligation to actually report news so we expect at least it to be true of course news can never be objectively true unless I say okay is something is 10 centimeter long or so I don't know um Anyway, so that's a very, very difficult thing to do, but but we expect uh, objective um, reality. While a movie like this one, this movie tries to achieve a certain degree of uh, reality, but uh, I, I, would, I would guess the um, audience has a different expectation. We don't really believe that movies show us reality or at least not completely. We always know it's a, it's a certain degree fictionalized, even if we talk about movies based on a true story, like this uh, as a Winnie movie, which seemingly is based on a true story. Um, it's not so much that um, I go there and I, know, I, I feel like, oh, this is exactly what happens, but uh, or what happened, um, but that's what I would expect from the news. So I guess he's a little bit safer than the news people that he portrays here but um yeah we, we get the full disgusting um stuff that uh, happens in a case like this and nobody is safe nobody um stays unharmed and it's just a horrible movie it starts horrible and just keeps getting worse and worse the whole situation completely escalates and it's very well done so i highly recommend to watch this uh, this uh, escalation it's a very good movie and then you can be excited for his other movie winnie and if you like this really much and uh, you want more before winnie comes out there watch noise it's very very good and yeah that seems to be a thing and this director has like social commentary with uh, at least a little bit of reality in there, or at least trying to uh, pick up on society or on uh, how mechanisms uh, work, like media, police, and so on. And uh, yeah, that's uh, very interesting. So among the three movies that I have watched, this is maybe my favorite so far. I mean, this... Um, uh, it's all because of me. It's a very melodramatic, very tear jerky, um, a little bit different from the other two, but uh, this one is really, really good. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend watching it. Be excited for this uh, film festival thing. I am. And uh, yeah, let's see what uh, we get more from Saka. Uh, give it a try. Um, they put out good stuff, and I, I still need to talk about Ken and Kaz or Kazu. Uh, which I still haven't seen, but I'm still very, very excited to watch very soon. I'm very, very busy. That's why I don't edit these videos so much. Um, just record, minimal edit out. Enjoy. Thank you very much for uh, maybe enjoying this video as well. Uh, have a nice day, evening, or whatever. And uh, I hope to... I don't really see you, but if you comment, I see your comments, so that would be nice. At least if you write a nice comment. So thank you very much. Until next time. Bye.